The governor of Oregon wants to have a special session so that they can work on fixing the eviction problem. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's coming out of the state of Oregon. Now, as I told you before in a video that I just did last week, the state of Oregon is looking at extending the state eviction moratorium. So the governor of Oregon, I believe her name is Governor Brown, Kate Brown, is looking at calling a special session just so that they can discuss the eviction moratorium. So it looks like it could be extended. But before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button, maybe leave a comment down below and let me know what you think, okay? Are you surprised that a place like Oregon is looking at extending their eviction moratorium and throwing more eviction protections in there for tenants, okay? They obviously do not like landlords in a place like Oregon. We're talking about one of the most progressive places in the entire country, very, very left-leaning, very anti-landlord, and they have lots of anti-landlord laws that are already in place. So to them, the thought of a landlord actually being able to make a profit off of the property that they own, that's too much for them. They can't stand the fact that landlords are in a for-profit business, okay? So it's absolutely crazy up there for landlords right now. All right, so this article, it comes from KXL.com and it says, Governor Brown favors special session to prevent evictions. Yeah, and let's see what this article says. After hearing that thousands of Oregonians could lose their homes over the holidays, Governor Kate Brown said she'd be in favor of a special session to prevent evictions. At a special meeting with the governor Wednesday night, members of the Community Alliance of Tenants praised the safety measures Brown's enacted during the pandemic. But they're not enough, says Mariah Al Allen Clare. I guess I butchered her name. <laughs> the winter and holiday season is upon us now. Therefore, we're calling on you to stop evictions, ensuring tenants are able to remain safe in their homes. The wait and see patchwork policy approach isn't sufficient. Yeah. What, what did I say before when um, I, I was talking about all of these eviction moratoriums, et cetera, that were extended all the way up until the holiday season or extended until the winter? Okay, immediately, as soon as the moratorium is about to expire, what happens? Oh, well, we can't evict people now. It's cold outside. We can't kick people out during the holiday season. I told you this was gonna happen, okay? And this shouldn't be surprising. This is exactly what this tenant right group is doing to the governor. And when the governor you know, sees these tenant right groups, I bet you money that she is not going and talking to landlord groups and talking about the issues that we're going through, okay? Instead, the only thing she's doing is listening to these tenant groups and trying to look good so that she can get reelected. Since the end of the pandemic moratorium, she says, many landlords have rapidly increased rents. We can't afford a rent increase under pandemic conditions and cover 6% rising inflation rates on goods and services. Tenants need a full and comprehensive housing protection plan that lasts for the duration of the pandemic and Oregon's economic recovery. Now, what a bunch of garbage that this tenant's right person, tenant rights person brought up inflation. Okay, they can't afford the inflation. So you're telling me that the landlords can't raise rent, you know, when meanwhile the cost of everything else is raising. Okay, the landlords can't pay their bills unless they raise the rents. But then you're saying that the tenants can't pay the rent because of the inflation costs. Well, the landlords have to deal with inflation too. Do you think that you're the only ones who have to deal with inflation? The only reason we're raising the cost of these rents is to cover increasing property taxes, increasing labor costs, increasing costs of goods and services that we use to provide you with housing. But you don't, you're not able to see that. You're not able to see that, okay? There's increased utility costs. I mean, there's so many increased costs, costs and with inflation going up the way it is, landlords are being forced to raise rent just to break even, okay? And, you know, it blows my mind that you would even sit there and then, you know, think that it was wrong, but at the same time say that you're suffering from inflation. Hey, you're not the only one, okay? The governor thanked the speakers for their feedback. 
she promised her staff would work with them and called for action from state lawmakers. Let's figure out a way to get the legislature into special session quickly and pass an extension of the safe harbor. If we can get the votes to extend the rental eviction moratorium, that would be fabulous, said Brown. And in a place like Oregon, it, I wouldn't doubt for one second that they already have the votes to extend their state eviction moratorium. Now, I don't know how the rest of the state is, but at least for you know um, the city of Portland and in the immediate surrounding area, it is extremely progressive. It is extremely anti-landlord. Okay, so maybe in the rest of the state there isn't a lot of stomach for you know an extension of this eviction moratorium, but. Considering the fact that a huge portion of the population lives right around Portland, that is not going to be enough to stop an extension from happening, okay? So a lot of landlords could be stuck under uh, an extended eviction moratorium. Ah. She said, she's working on long-term solutions. We are fighting with every single tool that we have to keep our renters in your homes. And we will continue to fight with every single resource that we have to build more affordable units across the state. Well, they have done everything possible already to make sure that developers have a very difficult time in building the amount of housing that is necessary to keep housing affordable there. Now, Portland and Oregon are pretty popular places right now. A lot of people are moving there from California because even though it's more expensive than um, other places in the country, compared to California, it is much, much less expensive. And they share kind of, you know, the same progressive culture as California. So Californians are moving there and they're the ones who are driving up the housing costs in a lot of cases, okay? So, yeah, it, it, it surprises me that, you know, the governor is so much on board and hasn't even discussed the issue with any landlords. OK, that that is one of my biggest gripes of all of these eviction moratoriums is, hey, who is the biggest stakeholder in not getting paid rent? I mean, for real, who is the biggest stakeholder? Who's the one who s could suffer the biggest financial loss? It is the landlord, it is not the tenant, okay? And what they are trying to do, you know, they're looking for more long-term solutions or whatever. Their long-term solutions are stuff like rent control, good cause eviction laws, you know, preventing background checks on tenants, you know, making it as difficult as possible for landlords to operate a profitable business. That is their long-term solution. OK, their long term solution doesn't consist of building enough actual affordable housing for the people who need it. It never has included that. OK, they they put work, they put together this patchwork of, you know, laws and rules and regulations that actually do the opposite. They actually force landlords to increase their prices. They force landlords to increase their criteria and they are forced to exclude more lower income tenants from their properties because they just can't make any money that way. OK, developers, they can't make money building affordable housing because you put all these rules, regulations, etc., on the development of the housing. So they have to build luxury because that is the only way they can make any money. So, yeah, I mean, good Lord, what is going on in Oregon? I mean, I wouldn't think that, you know, back when I was a kid, Oregon wasn't known as being this this sort of place. But, you know, obviously things change a lot in 30 to 40 years, okay? But yeah, um, I, they got a picture of this Kate Brown here and she kind of looks a little bit like uh, different. You know, she, she looks like a very different person. I'll, I'll throw it up on the screen over here. You know, I'm sure the people of Oregon already know what she looks like. And I mean, they voted for her after all, but people in the rest of the country, you know, keep in mind that, you know, th this stuff, that's going on in Oregon, on the West Coast, on the East Coast, etc. It slowly is seeping into the rest of the country, okay? It is seeping into places like where I live here in Omaha. It's seeping into, you know, the Midwest and down into the South, places that were traditionally very landlord friendly. They're picking up a lot more of these new rules and regulations, etc. And that's what they want. That's exactly what they want. They want the whole country to be this 
socialist, <laughs> you know, progressive place. And they don't want to give us as individual states even to, an option to do anything differently than what they think. They think that we think wrongly, okay? And, you know, they don't, they don't want landlords. They, what they want eventually is just for our entire country to be socialized, the government to be in charge of housing. And I am 100% opposed to that.